Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes and in this series of videos we are helping you guys out there prepare for the Texas EC6 Subject Core Exam as you prepare to become a Texas educator. In this episode we're helping you guys with science. More specifically we're looking at the laws of motion coming up next. Okay, if this is the first episode you've seen in this series and you'd like to check out my previous or future episodes, you can click on this card right here in the corner. That will take you to my playlist. In that playlist, I will have all the topics that I've covered uh, in the order that they were taught, and you can specifically drill down to what's most important to you. Now, if you cannot see the card I pointed to because your browser doesn't show the YouTube cards, you can check the description below, and I will have it there as well. I'm also going to link the previous episode to this one in case you want to check out that lesson prior to going to this one. And then I'll also have additional uh, items in the description to help you prepare for your exam. Now I know you only have five attempts to take this test. That's a lot of pressure. And that's why we're only spending five minutes per episode really focused in on the topic that is most important and the details of that topic to help you be best prepared for the exam. So let's go ahead and start with five minutes on the clock. And we'll put that up here on the, on the corner. Once it ticks down to zero, we will uh, stop the clock and we will actually uh, do a quick wrap up and then in the uh, following episode we'll pick up where we left off. So starting with five minutes on the clock. Okay, we're going to talk about Sir Isaac Newton. He was an English scientist that lived in the mid to late 1600s and he was most interested in math and astronomy. Now Sir Isaac Newton was so phenomenal in the laws that he uh, stated uh, with science as well as contributions to science that span many subject areas within the science field that we consider him to be the father of, the, of modern science today. Now, he was most interested in astronomy uh, in, in a lot of what he did, and we'll talk about his laws of motion here in just a minute, but he was influenced by previous scientists like many people that do research today. So, most notably, we're going to start with Copernicus. He was an astronomer in the early 1500s, and he stated that the sun was the center of our universe. Now, we know that's not true today, but at least got people thinking about the sun and how things work in space. Now, after he came along on the scene, another gentleman by the name of Galileo Galilei, which is an Italian scientist, he uh, redeveloped and re-engineered the telescope in 1564, and he was able to see planets more clearly, and he stated that planets revolved around the sun. Now, this gave some credibility to Copernicus, even though today we know that the sun is not the center of the universe, it is simply the center of our solar system. Now, after Galileo Galilei came about, then another gentleman by the name of Johannes Kepler, who lived in the uh, late 1500s, early 1600s, he was a German astronomer. He was looking at what Galileo did, and he said, you know what, the planets do revolve around the sun, but not in a perfect circle like Galileo was uh, saying. He said they actually were in an elliptical circle, and that the sun was slightly offset in the center of that which we believe to be true today based on the evidence that we see. Now comes on the scene Sir Isaac Newton. Now Sir Isaac Newton, he was very interested in uh, the way that matter worked. And so he really created the field of physics based on his laws that he created, the three laws of motion. And he understood gravity. He actually came up with the universal law of gravity, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But through that process, he developed the first law of motion. The first law of motion, we call it the law of inertia. And it basically states that an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion and in a straight line at the same speed unless acted on by an unbalanced force. So essentially what he's saying is if you have a rock and you place it on a table, it will remain on that table forever unless something that has a force strong enough to overcome its inertia gets it moving. Once it gets moving, it will stay in that motion forever and in a straight line. So for example, if I take that rock and I throw it, he's saying that that rock will stay in a straight line forever at the speed of, with which it left my hand. Now that gave a lot of people in his day and time some problems because they said, we've all thrown rocks and we see them actually make an arch, curve to the ground, hit the ground, start rolling, and stop. And he said, well, there's this thing called gravity. We can't see it. It's hard to explain. But if we could take gravity away, I believe that rock would continue in a straight path forever at the speed with which it left my hand. Now, that could not be proven until we got into the space program with Russia and America back in the early 1960s, and that was proven to be true. Now, the second law of motion is the law of force equals mass times acceleration. So F equals MA. Basically what that says is an object's mass will be dependent on its acceleration and the force that acts upon it. So for example, if I have a soccer ball and a bowling ball, both appear to be the same size with different masses. If I put them on the ground and I kick both of them with the same force, 
the soccer ball will go sailing. However, the bowling ball will break my foot and not go very far. What's the difference? The difference is the mass. Even though the forces were the same, the acceleration of both objects is dependent on the force and the mass of the objects themselves. Okay? The third law of motion is equal and opposite forces. Basically, it says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, for example, if I take a balloon and I blow it up really big and I hold the end of it and I let go, what's going to happen to the balloon? It's going to go, you know, sailing away and that's because the air exits the back side of the balloon, causing it to go forward. In the same way that a rocket goes up into space, it's because the fuel and gas is exiting the tail end of that rocket. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. We would see that in the bowling ball. Uh, if I kick the bowling ball, it's going to have an equal and opposite reaction to my foot. That's why it's going to break my foot, basically. Okay, so that sums up the three laws of motion. And we have about 28 seconds left. Let's go ahead and talk about real quickly the law of universal gravitation. That basically says I can take two objects of different masses, drop them at the same time, and they hit the earth at the same time. That is proven time and time again. You can try it at home. It's just, you know, wad up a piece of paper and drop a tennis ball on the paper at the same uh, height off the ground. They'll hit at the same time. It also explains why um, Earth stays in its orbit around the sun and the moon stays in orbit around us. And just all sorts of things with gravity. Okay, so let's stop that now. And let's wrap, do a quick wrap up. So the things you need to know most about uh, the three laws of motion. First of all, the first law is inertia. It says that an object at rest will stay at rest, an object in motion will stay in motion, and in a straight line in the same speed unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. Uh, the second law is force equals mass times acceleration, or F equals MA. Just remember the soccer ball, bowling ball example. And the last law is the law of equal and opposite forces. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Man, I got it all done in five minutes. That's kind of hard to believe. So, uh, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Please remember to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell, and it will actually notify you of any upcoming episodes that I post. And also, feel free to like and share my videos, and please comment below. Let me know how these videos are working out for you. Also, ask me a question. I'll feel, uh, I would be glad to answer your questions. Let me know what I can do in the future on episodes to help you guys even better. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel.